Well, good day, everybody. It's uh, it's great to uh, to be with you all to have the opportunity to uh, to share my view on uh, on the LiFi ecosystem. I'll be talking about ecosystems, and throughout my talk, I'll explain what exactly uh, I mean by that. But before I dive in, uh, just a, a quick word on uh, uh, my background. Uh, thank you, Peter, for the kind introduction. Uh, I work for for Signify. Uh, which is the number one lighting company in the world. We've been around for, for decades or even a century. You may have known us as uh, Philips Lighting in the past. Uh, we've been the number one in the lighting industry. You can only uh, maintain that over so many years if you have a strong focus on innovation, uh, which is one of our uh, uh, focal points. And that's also uh, why we got engaged with, with LiFi, because we strongly believe that this is going to take the lighting industry to new heights, and it's going to be very beneficial to, to consumers and markets across multiple segments. Now, a, a quick definition, and, and Nicola uh, already shared the taxonomy that the LCA is, is advocating. Uh, with LiFi, what I mean is a full duplex broadband wireless internet using a modulated light. And so keep that in mind as we talk about and go through uh, some of the talking points. Um, and my, the main points that, that I would like to leave you with at the end of my talk is that there's a lot of uh, future potential here with, with LiFi. There's, there's a strong body of research and academia who have been uh, uh, pushing the envelope and growing the, the capability of the technology over a long period of time and continue to do so. Uh, and this is really important, very exciting. However, if your aim is to bring commercial products to market, there's no need to wait. The time is now. Uh, we are ready. Uh, and what we need to do to take the next step in convincing the world that LiFi is fantastic is really to grow the ecosystem. And I understand ecosystem is a bit of a, a loaded term. So I'll, I'll talk more about what exactly I mean by that and also uh, you know, how we want to solicit your help and how you can contribute in building that ecosystem. Uh, next slide. Ah, there we go. So just showing you uh, a few examples of uh, why we believe that an industry is forming around LiFi. And what we're seeing is a number of lighting companies already starting to integrate LiFi access point in lighting fixtures. We have our colleagues from OLEDCOM who've integrated LiFi in a desk uh, lamp. We have our colleagues from Lucy Bell who've integrated LiFi into a, uh, in a downlight. Uh, and our, my own company, Signify, integrating LiFi into uh, office troughers. Uh, there's many ways to do this. You can integrate it into the light source or into the fixture or use some modular approach with, uh, with connector slots, uh, many ways to, to go about. But we see several examples of the lighting infrastructure being extended with this communication capability for, for LiFi. Uh, we also see uh, endpoints being uh, uh, introduced into the market. Uh, and as is uh, very common practice with new communication technologies, they start out as external devices that you connect to your uh, communication equipment, like a, a laptop or a tablet or a phone. So we see many modalities of, of Li-Fi dongles uh, being available on the market. Uh, but the industry is progressing uh, as we learn more and, and make advances in miniaturization and, and thermal management and power management. We see the components becoming smaller uh, and becoming more suitable for integration into end user devices. Uh, there are various uh, routes that you can follow. Uh, on the top left, we see an example of integration of an optical antenna in the protective case of a mobile phone. On the top right, we see integration of Li-Fi into rocketized devices such as uh, tablets. And then in the, the right bottom, we see integration of Li-Fi into AR and VR headsets, uh, making use of the uh, low latency properties of Li-Fi communication. But it's not only the, 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 the products that are evolving, also the, 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 the market and the business processes are maturing. Uh, and evidence of that is really the announcements that we've seen recently in the industry of uh, uptake and deployments, uh, commercial deployments of, of LiFi. Uh, 
in, in the last couple of months, we've seen announcements uh, of LIFI deployment in operational and tactical environments and deployments uh, in the military, um, on ground forces, but also in air forces. And we see integration of, uh, uh, of LIFI communication in the, uh, in the interior cabins of, of aircrafts with the uh, recent announcements of Airbus and Lataquer and, and Signify. And not only is this a testament to the maturity of the technology, but like I indicated, also to the maturity of the business processes, because these are very stringent environments, very serious industries. They place a lot of requirements on the supply chain, on the quality control in your manufacturing processes, uh, etc. So it's a clear sign of the of the industry maturing. And there are many, many more. I apologize if I did not include your favorite product or your uh, your favorite company, shoot me an email and I'll include it in the next uh, iteration of my slide deck. But the point that I'd like to make here is that an industry is forming around Li-Fi. There are uh, manufacturers and, and providers of different types of uh, complementary products that together build, uh, start building this ecosystem. So the, the, the point that I'm making, and I'm going to use an analogy here, uh, 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 bear with me, please. Uh, I believe and, and I would position that all the uh, basic elements of the industry are in place. Uh, we have a bowl, we have some water, we have a fish. Uh, and, and so what does it take to, ta to elevate to the next level? Uh, in my view, uh, we don't need a better fish. But the, the fish is good enough, uh, if you will, uh, bear with my analogy. Um, all the piece parts are in place. Um, rather, what, it, what we need right now in order to build this is to grow the ecosystem. So we want a thriving, bustling environment where everybody can uh, succeed, where multiple uh, species can coexist and be successful uh, together. That's really the analogy that I, uh, that I want to put forward to you. So again, it, it's not about making better communication or, or becoming faster or using more capable uh, LEDs or lasers or what have you. Uh, all that stuff is there in sufficient quantities at sufficient quality and sufficient performance levels. And what we need now really is to build the ecosystem. So if I depart the, uh, the oceanic uh, analogy a little bit and bring it back to, uh, to business terms, and what I mean by ecosystem is a conglomerate of economic actors that uh, mutually rely on each other, uh, both to survive as well as to thrive. And the purpose here really is to collectively create and build a global market within which we can all uh, compete uh, effectively and serve our uh, consumers. Uh, we're looking to, uh, to utilize this ecosystem to connect and to share, to grow and transform together. Uh, and, and if done right, uh, we strongly believe that the ecosystem can act as an amplifier to individual success and serve as a catalyst to collective success so that we can all grow. Uh, and it's also a great tool to ensure global coverage uh, in our global world, while at the same time have local uh, concentration. So ecosystem is the, is the key uh, uh, concept here. Now, how do you build such an ecosystem? And there are various ways of doing that, one of which is by building strong industry alliances. Uh, and, and right before my, uh, the start of my presentation, Nicola gave a, a fantastic introduction of the Light Communications Alliance, which is really the first industry alliance or consortium uh, that brings together like-minded uh, companies, uh, large and small, as well as uh, academia and, and institutes to, uh, to drive forward our common uh, message, which is to, to educate the world about the benefits and the use cases of light communication. Uh, and many companies have, have already joined. Uh, these, are, uh, these include the typical uh, telecommunication companies and, and service providers, but also lighting companies, uh, very dedicated Li-Fi companies, and, and many more. Uh, and really, this is my call out to all of you please consider joining. We would welcome you with open arms. Uh, we want to build an inclusive ecosystem. So we welcome you aboard uh, and, and welcome your contribution as we drive forward to realize our uh, collective mission. 
Now, industry alliances is one mechanism to build that ecosystem. There are more, uh, for example, the standardization. And I want to highlight two initiatives here, starting with uh, ITU. Uh, they started out with, uh, with standards for wired home networking and extended that to, uh, to become suitable for live communication uh, wireless as well. Uh, this is uh, mature technology. It's already available. It's approved and published, and, and silicon is uh, can be uh, obtained on the uh, open market. Um, and what the uh, light communications industry has done is to take this assisting technology and add to it features and support for light communications, such as uh, interference management and interdomain handover. Uh, some security mechanisms that are common across multiple networking technologies as well as the ability to perform uh, secure uh, handovers. Uh, while the technology is available today, uh, there are still activities ongoing to extend it and improve it even further. So the next generation of G.VLC is uh, currently being considered <clears throat> and we're looking to, uh, uh, to extend the, the technology with incremental feature upgrades and performance improvements and to really expand the, the set of use cases that can be addressed. Uh, but we also look further into the future, uh, initiatives like G.Fin for fiber to the room, where uh, as a lighting industry, our interest really is to make sure that uh, the existing lighting infrastructure can be leveraged for future uh, networking technology that makes use of fiber, uh, while at the same time also enabling new and, and more innovative smart lighting control use cases that make use of such new uh, infrastructure. Uh, there are more standards initiatives and uh, the one I'd like to highlight next is uh, IEEE uh, 802.11. Uh, this really started out uh, with the uh, motivation to integrate Wi-Fi 6 and some of the advances in, in ITU uh, by adding support for uh, optical antennas, uh, definition of the center frequency, uh, but also uh, thinking ahead towards implementation and adding support for low cost uh, circuitry and, and, and make sure that the full spectrum can be used uh, to benefit, uh, to make sure, make use of the benefits of, uh, of LED. Uh, and, and quite important here is to maximize also the reuse of commercially available uh, Wi-Fi chips. The, uh, this is work in progress. The um, publication and approval is expected in, uh, in a year from now, uh, more or less in the 2022-2023 timeframe. It is work in progress, so you can uh, join and, and contribute. Uh, what we've really done is to take the uh, 2020 amendment of uh, 802.11 and the AX uh, standard as starting points, and then make sure that uh, the activity really supports uh, LiFi as a future growth path for .11 uh, wireless local area networks uh, and um, uh, allow implementations to make use of, uh, of the cheap available Wi-Fi uh, chipsets. We're also looking, even though it's work in progress, we are keeping an eye to the future. Uh, in .11 BE or, or Wi-Fi 7, some interesting features are currently being defined which we believe are uh, very well suited for, uh, for light communication as well. And a multi-link operation is one good example of that. Um, but standardization alone is not enough. It allows you to build a compliant implementation, but what consumers really want is to have interoperable implementations such that they can buy their uh, components and products and equipment from their favorite manufacturer and not be reliant on a single uh, supplier. So interoperability certification programs are a necessity here. Um, uh, fortunately, uh, the industry has already made some, uh, some progress here. Uh, the, the previous two slides, I indicated that uh, baseband standardization is already on the, on the way in ITU and in IEEE. Uh, and certification programs for those baseband technologies are also already in place. So the home grid forum is looking after certification of uh, G.HN from ITU, and the Wi-Fi Alliance is looking after a baseband certification from uh, 802.11 in IEEE. Uh, and th that's gonna help us uh, tremendously, but more is needed because the focus of those existing certification programs is on the uh, baseband communication, uh, on the protocol engines, 
they are not yet targeting the optical aspects of a Li-Fi system. So that needs to be extended. Uh, within Signifier, we're developing ideas on how to do that. We very much welcome your contribution in this space as well. So for each of these technologies, we will need um, optical antenna certification, preferably, of course, uh, the optical antenna uh, is independent or agnostic of the baseband technology used. But that's how at least uh, we view how this should be uh, uh, developed. So um, uh, what I have hoped to, uh, to clarify in the past few slides is that the start of an ecosystem is already forming. There are lighting companies and device manufacturers, network equipment manufacturers, chip providers, standards organizations, industry alliances, etc. So that's already very good and very strong. Uh, and we're extending this further because that, that ecosystem really needs to support all the, uh, the features and requirements that, uh, uh, that need to be in place. Think, for example, about test houses and certification authorities. Think about regulators and policy makers. Think about installers and building managers where these systems need to be deployed. Um, and the, the ecosystem needs to consist and include all of these players um, uh, using the uh, liaison program of the Light Communications Alliance. We are reaching out to these communities, but we could use more help. So if you are active in any of these communities or know of organizations that uh, uh, that can contribute to uh, to the mission of building the Li-Fi ecosystem, uh, please reach out and we're happy to talk to you. So nearing the end of my presentation, I want to leave you with a, uh, a call to action. Uh, please be part of the Li-Fi future today. Uh, help us build this ecosystem. Uh, the ecosystem is already starting, uh, but you can uh, contribute and help us uh, extend it even further. And there are several ways you can do that. Uh, you can do that by joining an industry alliance like the Light Communication Alliance. You can do that by contrib contributing to standardization, be it uh, ITU or IEEE or both. Uh, you can um, do that by helping to define the certification program for the optical aspects. You can do it by reaching out to manufacturers of either components or products in order to, uh, to realize your own commercial deployments. Um, and of course, uh, please continue to push the boundaries in research and academia to drive the technology even, even further. So with that, and I'm, I'm back then, uh, earlier I showed you uh, as a sign of the maturity of the processes and, and businesses uh, with life, I showed you some aviation examples. So here I'm, I'm using an aviation an analogy we are on the runway, uh, Li-Fi is taking off. This is your time to, uh, to jump on board. And with that, I conclude my uh, presentation and hand it back to you, uh, Peter. Thank you very much.